The resurrection is used as proof of Jesus' divinity, but Jesus' divinity is supported by the resurrection. And example after example of Jesus doing this, where he's accepting worship, he's claiming to be the son of man, this guy who is receiving a kingdom in worship. This is the event we need to focus on. What was Jesus' answer to them? It is directly put to him, on pain of death by stoning, do you call yourself God or not? And he, what was his answer? Did he turn around and go, yes, I am God, I am God. No, he said, do you not read in your own scriptures that it is written that ye are gods? I would like you to, to address my kind of most central point, which is that the resurrection is used as proof of Jesus' divinity. But Jesus' divinity is supported by the resurrection. And so the only reason you entertain the hypothesis that Jesus in actual fact rose from the dead, instead of the plain reading of an event of person post-assassination attempt being seen with the wounds of his body and needing food still, right? which is survival, as he said in the sign of Jonah, as he prayed for, right? The, the post, and as Isaiah 53 says, he shall prolong his days, he shall see his seed. The only reason you entertain that hypothesis is in actual fact because you believe he's God in the first place, but you use the resurrection to prove that he's God. So I want you to square that circle. Explain to me why I'm wrong. I'm very happy, you know, I don't mind being wrong. I want you to explain to me why is that a wrong reading of the situation? Um, I'm confused about the point because I've directly argued Jesus is God because he said he was, and then he demonstrated it through the resurrection. I, I didn't argue in a circle. So, I mean, Jesus said he was God, and then he did miracles to show that he was who he said he was. That's not arguing in a circle. Okay, that's fine. That's really interesting. So, so you've, you've mentioned Luke 4, 8. It says very clearly in all of the translations you could possibly hope to read, it all say, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. If, if the word worship is used in Luke's gospel only, well, you haven't mentioned Matthew, Mark, Luke, Ma Matthew, Mark. No, 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 no. Let me, let me clarify it, my point here. Let me clarify my point. I, so, I understand your point. I understand your point, which is that in Luke 4, 8, the word worship is used. And in the same gospel, that word is only used again when it says the disciples worshiped him. Right. I get mm -hmm. that. That's fine. Okay. Um, the point I want to make is that, you know, that's the word, the word, as you well know, in Hebrew, Hebrew has multiple meanings. But if you look at what Jesus himself said, it says, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And there is no recorded event where Jesus solicited worship from anyone. And when he it was put to him that you call yourself God, they picked up stones to stone him. And they said, he said, why, which, which of my good deeds do you stone me? They said, for none of your good deeds, but that you being man, call yourself God. So the question, this is the question. This is the event we need to focus on. What was Jesus' answer to them? It is directly put to him on pain of death by stoning. Do you, do you call yourself God or not? And he, what was his answer? Did he turn around and go, yes, I am God. I am God. No, he said, do you not read in your own scriptures that it is written that ye are gods? Do you then object to the one whom God has sanctified and purified if he calls himself the son of God? So he says that in your books, mm -hmm. It is written that ye are even gods, but you object to me calling myself the son of God. So he didn't say that he is God. What he explained is that I'm using the term son of God in the same way, way and with the same language that it was used in the Bible previously for the children of Israel, that they were called the children of God. So this is this is the nature. Of, so, so when it was actually put to him directly, instead of post hoc interpretations of Jesus's words, he explained his meanings very clearly. Okay, Jesus called himself the Son of Man. He said that. He said, you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds. That's a direct reference, as every scholar will note, to Daniel 7, where the Son of Man shows up and receives worship in a kingdom forever. Yes, Jesus did receive worship. I gave you Luke 24. At the end of the chapter, his disciples worshiped him. So very much he is receiving this. And then you're also quoting from the Gospel of John, where Jesus says he is the one who resurrects people. Before Abraham was, I am. Uh, Thomas says to him, my Lord and my God. Every scholar accepts, including Bart Ehrman, for example, that Jesus is definitely claiming to be God in this gospel. So it's a very odd argument. Jesus is, of course, avoiding getting stoned, but he often goes back and reiterates that he's God. For example, after this, when he says, Israel, you are called gods, he's quoting Psalm 82. He then says, do you say of him whom the father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I say, I am the son of God. If I am not doing the works of my father, then do not believe me. If I am, do if I do do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I am in the father. Again, they sought to rest him, but he escaped it from their hands. So again, Jesus once again reiterates his divinity and equality with the father there in terms of ontology. He's again 
saying once again that no no i i am very unique i have a special relationship with the father and i am in him he is in me this kind of language i i, I don't know where you're coming from on this because again you can find example after example of jesus doing this where he's accepting worship he's claiming to be the son of man this guy who's receiving a kingdom in worship there's a lot of examples like this so i i just want to clarify with you are you referring to luke 24 50 to 52 yeah that's where his disciples worship him okay right now this is also the event of the ascension i presume you're referring to yes while he was still speaking words of love and blessing he floated off the ground into the sky ascending into heaven before their very eyes and all they could do was worship him overwhelmed and ecstatic with joy they made their way back to jerusalem is that the quote you're referring to and they worshiped him and returned to jerusalem with great joy yeah verse 52. are you not aware that this is not in the earliest editions of luke are you not aware uh, the, that this is a are you not aware that this is a well-known addition to the gospels what manuscripts show it's an addition well people can look it up themselves it's a well-known addition no. the ascension, there has never been a man, the there's ascension, never been a manuscript found without this section the ascension of jesus is well known to have been added as a uh, later interpolation of the bible and it is not to be found in the earliest editions of the bible uh, and, no. and this is this is a well-known fact so I, i'm quite surprised no, that you would use that and it's extraordinary that you have to you have have reverted instead of showing an event during actual jesus's gospel ministry where they worship him the question we really have to answer for us is where in the gospel ministry did jesus ever solicit what if he is literally the equal partner of the father we have to ask ourselves a simple question why wasn't there at least 50 50 of them worshiping the father and worshiping jesus why weren't there instances recorded in the gospels where he's sitting on a chair and all the disciples are bowing down before him instead all we have is him leading them in worship him encouraging them to worship the father him telling them worship the father when they come when a man comes to him and says master master you know um how shall i good master how shall i enter the kingdom of heaven he says why do you call me good? There's none good but God. Now, I know the Christian interpretation of this, which is that, don't you realize that I'm God, therefore I must be in actual fact the best? But that's not what he says. It's quite evident if somebody calls you something, they say, how, I, how can you call me this when there is none who is like none but God who is like this? That's, a, that's defining yourself as different. So in all aspects, Jesus was didn't claim to be worshipped. And the key biggest thing I want to actually say about being God is the fact that the Old Testament is chock full of statements that God does not die. I mean, that's the big elephant in the room here, isn't it? There are okay, multiple well, statements Exodus in the Old Testament. Exodus 15 says God is a man. You can you can quote Paul all you want in Acts, but that's irrelevant. I, I said Exodus. I said Exodus. Exodus 15 says God is a man of war. That's 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 fine, but you want but I that's, that has no relevance to what I'm actually saying. It's very clearly stated in the Bible in multiple multiple places and people can look it up for themselves that the Old Testament says that God does not die. And I think that that's probably the elephant in the room. You say that the proof of Jesus being God is that one, he said, I am. Again, I'm not sure how that um, is proof of anything. When it was put to him, are you God? He said, he referred to, him, to the, the language used in the Old, uh, okay. uh, Old Testament. And the last Let point I'll make is this. The last point I'll make is this, before I let you jump in, please. Um, you know, you talk about the son of man. You know, we know he wasn't the son of man. The son of man was a metaphorical reference. He wasn't the son of man. He was born of a virgin. So in actual fact, the son of God was also a, also a metaphor. And in fact, if you look at every single instance where it is reported that he said, I will die and be raised on the third day, he never says the son of God. He says the son of man will be raised on the third day. And that indicates that he didn't want people to misunderstand him, that he was in actual fact prophesying that he was God. He was saying that I am a man. I'm a human being. Okay. Okay, with regards to your claim that it's a fact that Luke was added to, that's just nonsense. We've never found a manuscript, a complete one, that has Luke in it, that has that section missing. It's always there. This is a reconstruction that some scholars have put forward, which there is no evidence for. Okay, Jesus did call himself the Son of Man. Matthew 8, 20, Matthew 9, 6, Matthew 10, 23, Matthew 11, 19. He says directly that he is the son of man multiple times in matthew 16 he affirms that he is the christ and we know this is a reference again to that same divine figure that is also called the son of man so over and over again jesus confirms again that he is the son of man i'm not sure where you're getting this from and again agree. all of this is I, irrelevant I, to the main topic because even if all of this is wrong jesus still died on the cross as just a human as every single scholar today basically accepts 
So even if all this is wrong and Jesus didn't rise from the dead, Jesus didn't actually claim to be God, it doesn't matter. He still died on the cross. The evidence overwhelmingly confirms that. That's why even atheist scholars today confirm that. But Gerd Ludemann says it's indisputable. So even if all of this stuff is you're right about, doesn't matter because I could cite atheist scholars that would probably agree with you on the on the Luke issue, but they would still say Jesus died on the cross. So I'm not sure how this helps support your point at all. So the Son of Man, uh, just want to check, are you, are you finished with your point? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not saying at all that he didn't call himself the Son of Man. I fully agree he did call himself the Son of Man. What I'm saying is he was born of a virgin, so he wasn't the Son of a man. But that's he not was... what that means. That's a specific well, phrase. That's a specific title we find in Daniel seven: a figure coming who, like one of a son of man, who's given a kingdom and divine power and worship forever. It's a specific reference to Daniel seven. It's not a literal title that he is a son of a man. So it's extraordinary that son of man is always metaphorical, but son of God is literal. Whereas that's a completely inconsistent position. No, son of God is also son of God is a metaphorical title for Messiah in most cases. Right. So there is no, therefore, evidence that he was an actual fact God because he himself... I gave you evidence. No, you didn't. You said he said, I am. That's not evidence of anything. Right? I gave you Matthew 7, 15. I gave you the references about worship. I gave you John 8, No, 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 no. The I can cite Mark worship, 1. So, so, so the references of worship are weak, as I pointed out. The You have one word which you then ascribe uh, as evidence after in, in a passage which is extraordinarily dubious and which has been touted by scholars as a clear example of interpolation in Luke. Mm -hmm. um, but th that's beside the point. I want to get back to the main point here, which is about the crucifixion.